So this visual does a great job of helping you understand the correlation between risk of material misstatement, the level of detection risk, and then the amount of substantive testing that the audit team needs to perform. So what we need to know is risk of material misstatement is driven by inherent risk and control risk. Now, you can see why inherent risk would be higher, um, but when it comes to control risk, it really addresses the control environment and then as well as how well the company designs their controls and then whether they're operating effectively, right? So if they're not doing either one of those, control risk is gonna be much higher, which means as an audit team, we can't rely on the controls the company has implemented to detect or correct any material misstatements. So since we concluded the risk of material misstatement is high, we as the audit team need to set our acceptable level of detection risk at low. And that's the only risk we can really control. So what does that mean? Well, when detection risk is low, that means we believe we have to perform more substantive testing procedures to identify if a material misstatement exists. And if one does exist, we better identify it. So when detection risk is low, that means we have to perform more substantive testing. Now there we've got seven different level of substantive tests, but ultimately it comes down to the auditor's judgment in determining what type of procedures would be more effective to gain better audit evidence, right? So if we need to perform substantive testing procedures that are more effective, it's really gonna depend on the specific line item or the cycle, right? But as you can see in the hierarchy of audit evidence, we should perform procedures that go in this order, right? So if we wanna get high level of evidence, we're gonna perform procedures that have direct and personal knowledge, right? Meaning we're gonna observe inventory or we're gonna go see if something's obsolete, right? And then the next best piece of evidence is external evidence. And the main one there is gonna be confirmations, right? So sending confirmations to banks or accounts receivable customers. In some cases, we're only gonna be able to get internal evidence, which means we just request invoices, inspect and reperform. And then worst case scenario, we just perform inquiry and that gives us oral evidence. But either way, when detection risk is set at low, that is because control risk is high. And ultimately, we just need to perform a higher level of sustaining testing procedures.